Well, good evening, folks. Well, in the interest of time, uh, it's six, it's just over 6.30, so we'll get started. Um, I do apologize. Uh, my the tech department didn't set up my normal setup, so I'm a little bit um, discombobulated here, but I think we can uh, we can muddle our way through it. Um, so thank you for coming and spending some time with us tonight. Uh, the format uh, we're going to use tonight is going to be uh, one similar to the previous uh, public information session that we conducted. We're going to give you a little overview of the scope of the work that we uh, are proposed for this project. Uh, we're going to go over the project budget. We're going to talk about the schedule, including the referendum schedule, and then we'll open it up for questions and answers. And then if any of you would like to visit, we have all the areas. We have the major areas in the building that we're touching open tonight. We'd be happy to uh, take you on a little building tour so you can see firsthand some of the areas in the building that will be impacted. So uh, with that, I'm just going to jump right in. Um, the project uh, proposition number one is $18.2 million. And proposition number one does touch all four of our buildings, high school, middle school, elementary school, and bus garage. But it primarily uh, quite a bit of the work focuses on the high school. Um, if any of you have um, seen our recent video or looked at any of the um, website or the newsletter that we just sent home, there's a, a fairly um, comprehensive list of all of the areas that we're going to touch within this project. I should mention that there are two types of scope items, those that are, quote, in the base project and those that we are specking out to be what's called alternative. Alternative scope items are really there in case the project comes in under budget. Uh, we will have already had um, items designed and ready to go because once um, a project is underway, the district cannot um, authorize any additional work above what the voters have approved. Um, it, for an example, our last project, 2019, we had uh, about a, just under a $9 million project, and we had the project come in under budget and on time. And because it came in under budget, we had a couple, we had at least one alternate scope item, which is the maintenance uh, building that we uh, put on the back of the property. And that, that afforded us the opportunity to start to better store our equipment uh, inside of the building rather than outside where it had been stored. So that's an example of alternative scope. Um, you can see that there's quite a bit of work planned here. One of the major items uh, that you'll see at the high school is the roof. The roof has now exceeded its warranty in terms of um, number of years, and we've had some issues with it. If you've, uh, you have students here, I know you've probably had it reported that on occasion uh, we have sprung a few leaks on some of the major storms that we had. We could not handle the volume of water that w was on the roof, and we've had some hallway leaks. We have, I want to assure the community that we've repaired those, those current issues, but the, uh, the roof is out of warranty. And thus, if you watched our video, you will see areas um, that are, uh, de the uh, insulation is delaminating and uh, the roof is, is definitely in need of replacement. That's one of the major items here. You will see things like the gym floor and um, the HVAC system, HVAC, HVAC system in the gym, which is original. Remember that the high school was built in 1972, so we're just over 50 years, and there have been no significant uh, renovations other than in district projects that we've done to update or replace major um, infrastructure components at the high school. We're going to go through some uh, uh, floor plans, but you'll see that we're looking to affect the back hallway where there uh, was um, six science rooms, an art room, and our tech room. And we're looking to reconfigure that to have four state-of-the-art science rooms, two state-of-the-art art rooms, and a STEM suite, which is shared by the technology department and the art department, so they can do a variety of different, more um, state-of-the-art kinds of projects. Um, of particular note, we're doing some work in the band area. We have, and we'll show it to you later, we have a band and choir room. Those rooms uh, need some uh, some attention right now. They have risers and uh, they're not really configured to maximize their efficiency. Um, our, in our current plan, you'll see some uh, architectural artists, conceptual drawings. We're going to kind of flatten out the rooms, take out the risers, put in some, some acoustical treatment, uh, reconfigure the practice and storage areas within those rooms and create um, larger instructional spaces. There are times in the, in the district where we only have a couple places where we can bring medium-sized groups. In addition to the auditorium, the library, the, the cafeteria, it'd be really nice on professional development days and, and other conference days where we can have other large group instruction rooms and the band rooms could double as those rooms in the current, in the, in the future 
uh, vision of those, the way those rooms will be designed. Um, we do um, have a number of uh, items, uh, the exterior facade, am I saying that right, um, that, that, that's deteriorated. That has also um, led to some uh, water infiltration. We've had some issues where uh, on some of the big storms we've had waters coming through uh, the vertical um, uh, members of our, of our um, rooms and then came into the room and stained some of the tiles and, and walls on the, on, on the um, perimeter. One other big item that came uh, loud and clear from a staff survey that we did last spring was, and we can certainly show you, actually, I believe, um, I don't know if that wall is a good example of it. When this building was built in the 70s, uh, there, was a, there was a design notion that you could build the building in a manner for which you could use the rooms in a flexible way. And so that the, the partition between all, most, uh, all of the center rooms and a few of the exterior rooms have partitions that are about three inches thick. They're not normal, studded, insulated walls. And over the years, we have had numerous complaints, and you'll see the one student on the video talk about how disruptive it is, where we have 12 rooms in the core of the building, for which in any particular room, you have the equivalent of three rooms, one on each of your sides, in addition to the hallway, and we can certainly show you this, where whether somebody's using a video, making a presentation, talking out loud, there's distractions coming from those rooms. So teachers for years have asked us to correct that, um, that issue. And this project seeks to do that by building permanent insulated walls, acoustically treated. But more than that too, uh, we now live in an area era where we have to be security minded. Those rooms, for example, the center rooms, have a door, not only from the hallway into the room, but have a door from each, from that room into each of the adjoining rooms. So some of those rooms have four doors, some rooms have three doors. And in the case of a lockdown, it's very difficult to secure those areas. And that's a great concern to our staff. So by building the uh, fully studded insulated walls, we're gonna be able to reduce some of the doors that are not needed, um, that were probably put there for convenience sake, collaboration, but while still maintaining, and our architects are experts at this, maintaining all of the fire codes and all of the uh, methods of um, egress should, uh, should a, uh, a fire occur. So we, we are balancing security with, with safety on those items. Um, we've talked a little bit about the tech room. One of the things that, uh, that you're probably aware of, I'm painfully aware of in December of 2020 for or since that point and, and forward several years, we've chased quite a few of electrical issues here at the high school, everything from some underground cabling that gave us problems to our transformer that gave us problems to our overhead service that comes from 203 that we own that gave us problems. It took us three separate incidents unrelated to each other to correct that. We now have reliable power uh, to the high school. We're very confident about that. But what we, what we um, learned through that process is that when the current building backup generator was designed and installed. It was only designed and installed to back up several aspects of the building. The heating system, some pumps, it wasn't designed to operate, uh, keep the building continuously operating. And that is problematic when we lose power. Uh, so this past, those three instances I explained to you, we had to bring in external uh, uh, generated power via a, a trailer and connect that to the building. If we were to have had a backup generator, we would have been able to seamlessly um, continue our operations, continuity of operations with that. We also see that as a, as a huge benefit to the community. It would be um, one building within Chatham for which if we had uh, to um, create an emergency evacuation shelter, American Red Cross um, needed to use the facility. We had something catastrophic in the area with a, a full um, a backup trader, generator that could operate the entire building, we would be able to provide a service to the community. I'm not saying that that's the primary reason for doing it, but that is certainly an additional consideration. Um, let me move ahead because I, and, and I'm more than welcome to kind of get through the presentation and then have you ask questions. You've come tonight for uh, some obvious reasons in your mind. And I want to make sure we get to that without spending the entire time me talking at you with, with, the, um, with the presentation. Uh, this drawing is also available in, in the brochure, and it just, it just shows you the different areas of the building that are affected. I forgot to mention that in the auditorium, we're looking at replacing uh, auditorium seating, auditorium uh, uh, recoding the floor, uh, the carpeted areas, um, 
uh, as well. Um, those are well overdue. We also, uh, as you've probably seen from the video, would love to refresh the uh, lobby area. It's, you know, it's 50 years old. It has a very, uh, we'd like to bring it up to a very contemporary look and feel. Um, it's, it's something that uh, the students and the staff has, have asked for in the surveys in terms of giving them, um, a, a, adding a lot of pride uh, to what's going on in the building. And I, I think I did mention the gym floor. The gym floor needs to be replaced every few years. We, we sand it and recode it, but it's to the point where, um, you know, wood floors, once you sand them a number of times, you can't sand them anymore. We're at that point, as well as our bleachers, which have been breaking down over the last couple of years. We've had to spend some money in terms of um, getting them fixed so that we can get through to this project, hopefully, and have them replaced. They are safe to use, but um, they are the welds are starting to break down and they're becoming very difficult to bring out and in and make sure that people um, long term, we don't have any issues with them. That's that's pretty much the high school. Here are some uh, photos uh, of close ups, which you know, um, you can either go on website or see in our video of examples of some of the things that I've talked about in, in all of our classrooms. Uh, I should say that in terms of, before I get to the bathrooms, in terms of our instructional areas, one of the things that we did is I invited the teachers in those areas, the science teachers, the tech teachers, the art teachers, the uh, music teachers, and the librarian to come together and talk with our architects. Um, we, I certainly didn't want to be uh, the facilities committee didn't want a project that was designed and discussed in absence of uh, user input, the, the boots on the ground, the people in the field who are providing this quality instruction to our students. We want to make sure that they had input into the, 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 the discussions. They also did visitations to other districts who have done recent projects to take a look at new science rooms, new art rooms, new tech rooms. Uh, the other thing that um, are, is sorely uh, in a need of attention, with the exception of the bathrooms uh, uh, adjacent to the auditorium, which are newer, is the rest of the toilet rooms uh, in, in the building. There are three other sets are original and um, really needs some, are in desperate need of some updating. And if you'd like, we can take a look at some of those to better illustrate that. Um, again, these are examples. I'm going to brush through them and not for anything other than to, to come back if you have any specific questions. One of the nice things about um, the theory around our tech room is right now, um, it's the old wood shop in the back corner. You said you went here, you probably remember it. It's in the far back corner. And uh, because we do teach some Project Lead the Way um, science engineering uh, courses, we teach them in an old social studies room. And the in schools today, what uh, we do is we bring those two rooms together and really a, a clean side and a dirty side. So on the clean side, students are working on CAD and designing, uh, whether it's robotics or their um, their projects. And then once that's done, they move over to the dirty side and they kind of build and, um, and, and, and having those right next to each other uh, would be really conducive to some nice articulation between them. The, the instructor can be in one room, uh, we, you'll see the, the artist renditions of glass partitions so that the teacher could be in one room doing a lesson while they're watching while he's watching the students in the other room kind of uh, watch their project come to fruition. Also, we see a tight integration with uh, the art department and the art department working with our engineering department in something we now call STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And so we get some nice interdisciplinary play there. That's the technology room. I've talked to you about the band and choir room. Um, we would be reconfiguring them, providing some really nice practice spaces that are really um, kind of outdated and not no longer functional, providing some instrument storage. Our instrument storage is terrible. Um, most of the instruments don't either either fit into the cubbies um, or they um, the, the, the cubbies themselves are broken. We'd like to see some nice instrument storage, which is all included um, in, in our theory. We talked a little bit about the art rooms. Um, we would be able to um, provide much better uh, areas that are conducive to all types of different um, art projects, everything from ceramics to visual arts um, and uh, drawing, painting, chalk, and I'm not an artist, so it probably ends there. Uh, science rooms, uh, the, the trend now is to go to an integrated science room. That's where the lesson and the lab occur in the same location. Uh, again, the, art, uh, the science teachers spend some time in other districts and looking at other designs and working with our architects. These are some of the ideas they came up with. Um, we did uh, include, as I mentioned, a revisioning of the front entranceway and lobby. Um, the front entranceway, let's see if I have a photograph here, um, does have a proposed canopy, uh, kind of give the school a more 
uh, contemporary and modern look. It also gives some uh, protection to the front of the school as you're entering it. We're, this is a canopy that is, you go and attach itself to the existing structure. We're not looking to do any renovation to the new doors um, or um, security vestibule that we have there. But then as you move in to the lobby, uh, we already have some beautiful terrazzo flooring, but uh, the thought here is to take some of the old red brick, reface it, freshen it up, um, upgrade the ceiling, do some painting, um, perhaps do uh, something to the front main office in terms of the storefront, and really give that front entranceway some pop and some design and, and kind of a, a renewed uh, sense of a, a newer building. Um, and then the alternative scope here, and again, this is if you know the budget, if the uh, project does, was um, we're, we're kind of, uh, I don't say landlocked, but there is a lot of extra space here in the high school to be creative. One of the um, things that the students and uh, the librarian came up with is actually um, punching through this wall to a courtyard that is, that is mostly unutilized. And, and so the idea there is that uh, we could create an outdoor uh, space for which um, students and staff could go and do reading or projects, get together, socialize, and uh, bring, bring, bring a class out there. And um, that was, you know, that was one of the proposals there that would better make use of that space that's out there. The other, the other one uh, alternate scope that we asked for was um, we have had a lot of challenges over the last few years in terms of traffic flow in front of the high school. Um, so we did ask uh, a, our architects to um, engage with a landscape architect. And is that the right? Uh, landscape architect who also does parking lots and, and does utilization studies. And this is, uh, this is a conceptual drawing of um, how we would reconfigure the parking lot to be more conducive to having some really well-defined traffic flows for both students and staff, uh, kind of clean up the parking area. One of the questions that we get asked is, are we giving up parking spaces? And the answer is no, this actually nets us a few additional parking Spaces. It also creates an area for when students are dropped off that they would be dropped off and they would be on sidewalk to get to the building as opposed to crossing over the parking lot. Uh, it would also give a smoother path to our buses. And this is essentially um, a stat. Uh, this is essentially, essentially accomplished by narrowing that center island a little bit and doing a redesign. Again, that's alternate scope. You know, we would have to get through all the other items in the project before that was even considered. And then that would be brought up to the board for consideration and need their approval to move forward. Here's what that artist rendition of, of that um, renewed space would look like. Um, the middle school and the rest of the buildings will go pretty quickly. They're pretty simple. Uh, one of the things that we have to um, um, address at the middle school are the lintels. Um, that se center section of the building is over 100 years old. And those are um, cracking, spalling, and what's the third thing they're doing? Um, they're 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 sagging. They're so, sagging right. Okay. Too. So um, that was identified um, several years ago, pretty much right after the last project, and and has to be a priority at the middle school. It's it's a it's a structural and a safety issue. Uh, we would be attacking uh, in this particular project the lintels that are on the oldest part of the building. The the alternate scope there. Um, there are actually, I don't see what it is, two, there. okay, because once there's also a site list. The alternate scope there is that building has no backup generator, and so we're looking to get a, a price through the project to see what it would cost for us to put a backup generator there. As I mentioned earlier, we have a backup generator here. It doesn't do the whole building, but we'd like it to. At MED, we have a backup generator that does the whole building. So anytime that we've had a interruption in service from our provider, our uh, elementary school is, is usually not affected by it. Um, at the elementary school, a couple a couple things. Uh, the floor tile in the um, in everything except the newest wing, which I believe was built in 1988, um, needs to be addressed. Uh, I think we have some photographs here. But in a previous project, a decade or so ago, um, they took uh, vinyl floor tiling and went right over the existing flooring. Fortunately, that existing flooring um, uh, is not providing a substantial um, subflooring to, to those tiles, those tiles that trap that flooring underneath. It does contain asbestos. And before we have a bigger problem on our hands, we want to abate that and take out that subflooring, put a new subflooring in, and, and, and retile all the areas that you see with the slash marks. Um, the red line that goes around the building, um, we're looking to um, repair the exterior stucco. 
stucco and do any perimeter painting uh, that's necessary uh, with that replacement. Also, we would uh, the gym is in need of uh, a coat of paint. Um, and then we have some some small masonry work around the uh, the perimeter of the gym uh, brick that needs to be uh, attended to too. Um, I think that's Mary Darts. And you can see some pictures, um, bottom right hand corner, you can see some of the articulation of the tile on the floor that's, um, that's a problem. Now, um, we have separated, we've also included a separate proposition, Proposition 2. Uh, we separated them because we wanted to um, give our voters and our community an, uh, an option to weigh in on whether this was something that they would support. Um, currently at the high school, in the last project, we went and replaced all the uh, um, heating, ventilation, air conditioning units, all the rooftop units. This building is all up to speed. It has all of the latest MERV 13 air filtration uh, systems. We were able to, we're in the middle of the pandemic, um, and we were able to switch a few things out and make sure that we had the latest state-of-the-art filtration. So as we're moving larger amounts of ambient air from the outside in and doing an air exchange, uh, which we find helps cut down on the propagation of viruses, we were able to put in state-of-the-art um, air filtration. And at the same time, this building has always been and, and continues to be fully air conditioned. So uh, the, the staff and the students here do uh, enjoy a building that is uh, full, fully climate controlled all year round. At the Mary Dardis School and in many schools, in, you know, in, in, around the region in the state, uh, we're going to school at times that are a lot different than they were years ago. A lot more, we're finding a lot more days in the spring and in the summer with uh, extended school year and summer school programs and in the fall where the temperatures within our rooms are just unbearable. And there was a time where we felt very comfortable about opening doors and windows and increasing airflow. We've now reached an era where that makes us very uncomfortable. And so there's a secondary purpose to our proposal to ask that we replace the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning at Mary Udars, and that is one of security. We can keep the building fully um, secure at all times while providing increased climate control and air ventilation throughout the whole building. And we'll go over the finances on that because unfortunately there's a cost to that, and we'll talk about how that differs from the main project in terms of uh, still receiving building aid, but not being able to put any of our reserves against it. So in terms of cost, we'll go over that a little bit more. Um, bus garage, uh, in the last project, we resurfaced. Uh, the bus garage is um, sided with me corrugated metal siding. That metal siding at the base has begun to rust and deteriorate through the use of salt. We live in the Northeast. Anything metal never seems to last long. And we were only able in the last project to pretty much do the, in the front side. What we'd like to do in this project, a few things at the bus garage, uh, is continue that replacement of the exterior uh, siding around three sides and then there is the side that faces the middle school is actually a masonry wall that needs some masonry work it needs to be repointed and um and, and and fixed the other thing at the bus garage is our uh tiny transportation office the break room and the bathrooms that all of our drivers enjoy are i'll say horrible uh, they are embarrassing uh, it, we've never done any work there, um, and uh, it, if we're, you know, it's it's small amounts of uh, investment to make those areas more functional and really uh, something our employees deserve. So if you, there might be some pictures in here, but um, and, and I know in the video we definitely showed some pictures. But I'm embarrassed that our, our employees have to use those areas within the bus garage. They deserve facilities similar to what we do with the rest of the district. There is also some district-wide scope. One of the things I didn't mention is that we are, just like we did with the last project, and we milled and repaved the NED parking lot, which was uh, in terrible condition. Uh, the high school parking lot is pretty much in the same condition. We are going to mill and repave the high school parking lot. That's different than the reconfiguration of it. We, in the base project, we fully expect to mill and uh, repave that. Um, we also need some curb repairs, some sidewalk repairs, and um, the, there, there is some desire to have the back wall of the gym, which faces the soccer field and the football field, to do something that's more attractive than just that bare wall by maybe painting a giant panther up there or having home of panthers or something that just gives some branding and appeal on that back wall. The alternate scope here, um, and, I, and we have some drawings that have just 
been advanced is we've been talking since the pandemic uh, at the middle school, our students during the pandemic, when weather permitted, went outside. We have a bunch of picnic tables out front and we're able to utilize that area as an outdoor learning space. Um, a lot of schools uh, in the region uh, enjoy covered space and we, we uh, can envision potentially if the money exists, putting kind of a, um, I forgot the dimensions were, but a large enough pavilion to hold enough picnic tables to have a class or two outside right in the front of the school. We also think that that would duly serve the soccer fields and the baseball field there for parents who were who were over there enjoying um, our athletic contests. So I've talked and I rambled on. Uh, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Mr. Chuddy, who will go over some of the finances, and then let's open it up for questions from people who are here, so that I make sure that we meet your needs uh, in terms of why you came out tonight. Oh, all right. Yeah, let me just... yeah, okay. So if you look at this slide here, you know we're, we're discussing the budget. So the what Sal uh, said at the beginning, uh, in project budget, eighteen point two million dollars, and then for Proposition One, and then if there was money, you can see the alternates. But that's only if we go under the eighteen point two one million. Um, and then Proposition Two, air conditioning, the HVAC is three point eight seven nine. So we split those. As he stated, I think he stated earlier that we need to pass Proposition One to even consider Proposition Two. So here's the costs. If we look at what it's, what, you know, what's it going to cost the taxpayer? So our goal, I've been here 10 years, done some projects, and our goal is pretty much trying to get close to, um, you know, a, a some zero project or hardly any tax increases. And we've been able to do that by uh, building up our reserves, uh, capital reserves that are voter approved. So if you look at this project, the project uh, proposition one, 18.2 million. Capital reserves are like savings accounts, and we have surpluses and some money. We were able to put money away for projects. So 3.4 million was on a capital reserve that we had a few years ago in our last project that we had left over. And then last uh, May, we went out with another $5 million capital reserve project that the voters approved. And we were able to have some surplus to fill it up, but we moved some reserve money from other accounts to complete that $5 million because we wanted to lower the tax impact as much as possible. So that's where we came up with 8.4 million in reserves. So what that does is it reduces our net borrowing to 9.783 million. The average debt service over 15 years is the principal interest on that borrowing of the $9.78 million. So 849,454 a year. And then we get about 49.6 or roughly every dollar we spend, we get uh, 50 cents back from the state. So our state aid is 691,750. So average local cost or what we need to come up with taxes is $157,000 roughly a year. What does that mean? The tax impact on a market value of a house of $100,000, it's $7.79 a year. Obviously, there's not many $100,000 homes. So we scale this up. Basically, you multiply by two, three, four, five to get the different amounts. So we typically talk about a market value house of $300,000. So $23.37, uh, and that would be for the year, not monthly, but for the year, that would be the cost to do project one. Now, proposition two, air conditioning, ventilation, air quality, stated it was 3.879 million. So there's no reserves on this because we used all the reserves that we had available for the first proposition. So we have to borrow the 3.879. So the debt service, principal interest in, on that debt is 336,794. State aid, roughly that 50% back, 147,300. So that local cost is slightly more than the other project of 189,494 or $9.36 a year for $100,000. But if you look at the $300,000 house, you get $2,808. And one thing to remember is these are separate. So if you're gonna add the total tax impact, you'd have to take the cost of Proposition 1 and Proposition 2 to get the total uh, cost of the increase. Uh, one positive note that in the 2019 project, we went out and we, we uh, argued for a higher rating because of our reserve plan, our long-term financial planning. And so we did get a rating upgrade from Moody's from AA3 to AA2, which saved us a significant amount of interest costs. And I'm, I'm assured that we will be able to maintain that rating on this project. So that lowers interest and lowers our, you know, lowers our cost of the taxpayer. 
So I lied before I opened up the questions. I sorely neglected to introduce my colleagues up here, and I apologize profusely, but I wanted to introduce Matt Monahan and Will Calhoun from SEI Design, architects that have been with the district a couple decades, uh, very familiar with our buildings. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is um, they also conducted something that we're required to do, which is called a building condition survey. Every five years, the state requires that we assess our buildings um, conditions. That way, uh, when we apply for state aid, we can match what we're asking for to what we said um, our building conditions were. And they've also completed that over the last year. And that was the impetus for um, the facilities committee, which I'm going to introduce next. Chris Spencer, one of our board members and chair of the facilities committee. And Chris, I want to invite you to make any comments uh, in just a moment. Um, that that's where the facilities committee started was the, the building condition survey. And in addition to that was the input from our very um, talented and um, uh, valuable director of facilities who works in our buildings every day is able to identify where some of the areas of greatest need and repair are. So the, the nexus between the building condition survey, our input from our facilities department and our input from our facilities committee is where we started in identifying these scope items. With that, Chris, I'm going to let you make any comments you would like, and then let's open it up for some questions. Thank you, Sal. Um, maybe I'll just reinforce some of uh, Sal's insight uh, into how we got to where we got to. And I think an important place to start is um, Sal touching on the fact that, you know, if we're thinking about the high school, you know, there really hasn't been any significant um, modifications in school since school was built, which is, you know, quite a long time ago. And, you know, one could argue, well, you know, it hasn't been touched to now. Why bother to touch it, you know, now? And, and I think that thought um, uh, is certainly one you could make. But um, I think what, what the facilities committee did, what the, what the board has done, I think what, um, and I don't want to speak for uh, the administration and staff, but certainly, you know, my my understanding of it is that coming out of the pandemic, there's been a lot of questions that I think the community has had, the board has had, our administration has had about, you know, where are we? You know, where are we coming from? How did we get here? How do we, how do we improve this district? Um, how do we, how do we, you know, speak to that Panther pride that we hear a lot? Of? And we really wanted to um, evaluate uh, not only the building conditions, report that is absolutely critical to, to respect and, and uh, keep up, but we wanted to, to speak more towards the improvement of, of education and curriculum. And we felt like that was really like a center hallmark of what we're trying to do here. And, you know, this is by no means the end all, but this is a significant um, impact to improving that. And, and you know, we feel that there are obviously there are components of the district that deserves to be looked at down the road, but um, I think everyone is very happy with with, uh, with where this project ended up, and we're very excited about it. So, just um, in terms of um, timeline, because if you're unfamiliar with the capital project, we were uh, let me go over a little bit of the timeline, and then, as I promised three times already, we'll open up the questions. But the board, of, we brought this entire design plan to the board of education, so this committee did. Uh, in December, the board has then uh, uh, passed a resolution moving this forward. Uh, we have then um, provided all the legal notices uh, to have the public referendum vote in February. In the meantime, we've produced the video, which is out and available on YouTube. The um, newsletter was finished and mailed last week. Um, as I'm hearing, uh, people started receiving it towards the end of last week, early this week. And tonight we're having the public information session. At the bottom of the newsletter, um, for your benefit is the project timeline. So even though the public will come out and vote um, on February 14th, and we don't know what, how, which way that's going, we're hoping that everyone in the community will support us. If that were to uh, pass, we're still far from getting a shovel in the ground. And I just wanted to mention that at that point, then um, our architects come back in and refine designs with our uh, stakeholders, our teachers, our administrators, they produce documents that then go to the New York State Education Department uh, Committee or um, Facilities Planning Office. They have to then approve all of the plans. Uh, if the plans are not approved, we don't receive state aid, so that's a critical part of this. Uh, we would anticipate on this time frame that the State Education Department would give us approval somewhere in January of 24, so about a year from now. 
And if that were the case, then that would give us the go ahead to go out and bid. Uh, we would bid it um, in the February, March timeframe with a hopeful construction schedule uh, of summer of 24 and summer of 25. Many of the things that we're talking about doing, not all, but many, uh, will have to take place when school is not in session. Um, and that's why the construction window in school projects is pretty narrow. Um, and it would take place over the summer of 24 and 25 with the project coming to an end in the fall of 25. Um, and the last piece is that our uh, polls will be open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on the 14th in the Mary E. Dardis Elementary Gym. So, got yeah, some guests here tonight. Yeah, does anyone have any questions about anything that we presented or anything that's on your mind, either from a scope item or from financials? We are we are your we are your audience now. Anybody? Uh, I see a lot of items here that probably need to be done, and I'm not opposed to any individual one, uh, especially when it comes to the repair and sometimes refurbishment. On equipment that's breaking down. Uh, I would have preferred maybe if some of these things were provided as you split off in a sense the HVAC project, the design items like the lobby and moving classrooms and things like that are sort of a different class of issue than the roof escaping. The gymnasium floor can't be refurbished anymore because it's a little piece of balsam wood. Um, so I, I feel uncomfortable with that because there are some items here that I would like to see done because they very much need to be done. And then there's other items where I'm looking at it and I'm saying, what the hell are we spending our money on? And not just our money, but other state taxpayers, because of course we're talking about state aid. Now, of course, we're spending our money for their state aid so that's the other part that sort of immediately kind of bugs me is when we talk about state aid is paying for the project or part of it. It's not really technically state aid, it's taxpayer dollars. So, uh, yeah, so that it's sort of deceptive. Oh, well, it's only going to cost us whatever per household. Well, we paid into the capital, we pay for the state aid, we pay for So it's kind of a little deceptive. I understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say current dollars from today on. But uh, my thing is, like, I'm looking at the lobby here. There's a reason why a lot of this stuff, like Music Falls, I believe, where I went to school, was built back in the 50s. Very similar, you know, the cinder block kind of design. It's still there. And all the stuff, it's a lot of it's still original. The places where they did updates, you can see where they did updates. Because now it looks like crap. You know, when you're, so I'd be very wary of, I mean, obviously the roof needs to be done. The fact that any water is coming into a classroom is horrifying. I mean, that probably should have been done 10 years ago. But I don't know why the school isn't better stewards of some of this stuff. And maybe listen to, you know, boots on the ground. I'm sure this gentleman's been complaining about this stuff for years. In doing these things as needed. Okay, we need a new roof this year. Let's put a thing together for a new roof. You know, we need... Do the tiles in this, you know, in the in the elementary? Let's. Sounds like it, the last time they were done, it wasn't done properly. Somebody thought they could get away with something. Yeah, was that in. during the eighties, during the asbestos abatement stuff that was going on then that they were trying to cover it? And it's funny because asbestos tile is almost indestructible, so they probably didn't need to do anything with it. It wasn't scattering asbestos. It wasn't. It wasn't an encapsulation. Yeah. Yeah. Back. Back. Yeah. Then. Yeah. 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 So it makes it very difficult for us to to. You know what you know what it is it's like we're just gonna lump it all together hide a bunch of not intentionally i don't mean we're being deceptive here it's just when we wrap up so much stuff together it becomes such a big number it's so much stuff we will you know and i don't think that's the way that we should be handling these issues i mean it should be like that auditorium oh my goodness you know but Money should have been put away for the auditorium and there should be an auditorium project that people vote on and can see, oh yeah, we're voting on the auditorium today and then go and see the new auditorium. It shouldn't be this omnibus stuff. It's just like every level of government does. Where there's so much stuff in there. Nobody can even comprehend it. And I and don't know why things are done that You way. lose the ability to say yay or nay to things when they're lumped in. So when it, when it involves things like 
something you just mentioned, and now I've lost my train of thought, the auditorium floor, or things like uh, these uh, lintels. And I understand sometimes these things, you know, everybody's got stuff where it's going on, you don't even really think about it. I'm in a fire company, Sometimes we find that there's a leak in the roof. We just had the roof redone. And, and you know, it's like you don't find out about that someone's there watching it leak. And you're like, okay, there's a leak. Um, however, that capital fund, and you know, a few years ago there was a whole kerfuffle over our capital reserve fund. That's the kind of thing that I would have rather seen somebody making a proposal during different years to say these things need to be done. We're going to spend down our capital reserve fund to avoid tax impact. Here's what the cost will be, so that we actually are recognizing what the cost of the items will be. I have no idea what any of this stuff costs, and I'm sure there's a more detailed document which you guys have made available. I have not seen it just because I'm not focused on it all the time. The other thing I worry about a little bit here uh, in, in terms of additional stuff is when you guys talk about the educational environment and um, improving things, it's... It's hard to picture it. I mean, I went here and for my entire grade school career, and uh, there were never any deficiencies. I was in the orchestra, played string bass. Those cubbies in the band room were probably terrible. Mine was awesome. It was huge because it had to fit a string bass. And uh, so anyway, I'm sure that's still standing, and hopefully the string bass is still there. Uh, but... In any case, what I'm thinking about, you know, in the science lab classrooms, I've been, you know, I did the biology lab, I did the physics lab, I did the AP bio. We always had labs in the classroom. There were always lab materials. So I'm, uh, and, and, you know, these I'm very, <laughs> these black. Uh, Point of order. Yeah, please. Um, we're in a question and answer, right? Oh, so right. The question That's be, a good point. Do you have a question here? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, so I, I, it's people... like it's almost too late to do anything about this. Well, but, but, that, but that's but, fair. But why don't you ask a question and then yeah. other people? That's rather not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. So, okay. what sort of opportunity might we have to split out repair items that are dealing with function of the basic function that's required and and appropriate, and then items which are Certification projects. So I, I think I have two comments. One, um, and, and I'd like Chris to, to also speak to this. Um, the facilities committee did not take the decision of weighing items in terms of need to do um, and categorize them in terms of need to do, nice to do, nice to have kind of thing. There was a strong philosophical belief that there has not been an investment in anything to do with the instruction program. Um, since this building was built, and that we would look at an approach that says that the upgrading our science rooms, our art room, or technology is just as an important need as it is to replace the roof. And that's a, that can be argued by anyone's perspective, but that was the approach that we took. Um, in terms of, um, you have to be very careful with, and, and I invite my colleagues to, um, state building aid does not pay, pay for repairs. You can only renovate or replace. They're not, it's not a maintenance project. That would have to be done through a different method. So when a capital project is formulated, it's typically to come in and do those larger items that require you know, an overhaul, a renovation, or a replacement um, in terms of your scope. Uh, I, I mean, Chris, can you um I mean it's a fair, it's a very fair question in terms of and we, you know, we anticipated it. It's do you and, and you're absolutely right. One of the things that you hit upon that not every taxpayer understands, I know being on the finance committee in the past, uh, Mr. O'Connor does, we have never said um, that the only tax impact is the, the new tax impact or is the, the, um, the project. We're very careful and sensitive to the fact that your state aid dollars, as you've mentioned, uh, the capital reserve, those were all taxpayer money that went into that. And so that we would be remiss to just say that when a school district comes out and says, there's no tax impact, it's not accurate, right? Um, there, the tax impact may have already occurred in terms of the fact that money was put into a capital reserve or in some cases, other districts enjoy higher building aid ratios. Often you will see our, our neighbors to uh, the east 
are at some 70 some odd percent. So some people enjoy building more money from the state than we do. Um, but you're absolutely right. We've been very careful not to try to be deceptive in terms of saying, oh, look only what this is going to cost. The cost is the cost. Um, and it's either borne by previously taxed money that went into a reserve or the newer tax money. Um, I, I would love just to kind of to um, more on that, that philosophical belief of the committee that if not now, when, and that we felt like our students are falling behind in the facilities that they deserve um, to their contemporaries in the region. Well, I, no, I think the committee has, uh, has talked about this and, and the board has talked about this, um, but we, you know, we did start obviously from, you know, what is, we started talking about the roof, you know, right away. That was, you know, obvious and things like that. We knew that the middle school lentils um, have been pushed down the road numerous for numerous years. It was something that was getting to a point where it was, um, you know, for our architects and our professional recommendation, it's something that we you know, really, really should strongly uh, consider this go around. Um, but aside from that, uh, I don't believe that the recommendations of the committee um, were just with, you know, the, the decisions conversation within the committee. I think, like I tried to touch upon before, um, you know, the, 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 the Board of Education uh, over the past uh, couple of years, man, coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic has really wanted to um, deeply focus on uh, you know, the health and well-being and um, ability for our, our students uh, to get the best education possible. And we, we feel as a board that it is the utmost important uh, to do that. And, and how do we do that? I mean, there's many ways to do it. You know, we've been working with um, Sal and his administrative staff to come up with new ways, um, new initiatives, new programs. You know, there's a lot of focus on um, the health and, and well-being of our students. And all of that plays into uh, actually being in these buildings and working in these buildings and learning these buildings. So just as much about needing to keep the water out of the building, uh, the, the committee um, discussed and made decisions on uh, finding as much need to improve as much as we can to improve um, the, the, the environment. And if we could have done that across all buildings on every, every grade level, we would have loved to have done it. But like everything else we had to prioritize, and we, we made a decision in the committee uh, to prioritize in the way that we've done. Next question. So um, thank you very much for a great presentation. Thank you to all the hard work that's gone on by the administration, the staff, the maintenance department, all the questions the board's done, all the committees, all the contractor support. Um, Chatham does a really good job, but um, after that compliment, let me ask, why didn't this break out ballpark numbers for each item? In other words, when you call out the milling of the parking lot because it's crumbling, you know, we know that's included in an 18-2 number, but how much is that compared to, because when I look at this, I end up thinking use of this nice green area out here would be academic in focus and probably not that expensive. Whereas there's a lot of stuff we could have been doing with a parking lot last year, year before, et cetera, where maybe a major milling project isn't best use of New York State or local taxpayers. So my question is, why didn't you break out for what all the residents were going to get mailed to them, what the roof ballpark number would be, what the parking lot would be? I don't know if maybe our architects could help us with that as well. Um, typically, that's not something that is done in projects, capital projects um, that I'm aware of. So basically, there, you know, there are levels. I mean, it's been looked at in, in great detail, actually. I mean, that's how you the, came up with 18 2. Yeah, how, how the. And you got a whole yeah. list of things that must have added up to 18 2. So why weren't. Those things, and, and I don't think this, I, I think this is an administration question, because as the previous questioner was, 
it's a useful number that you come out with about you know three hundred thousand dollars. What what does this mean to me ballpark? It may not be exactly accurate, but it's a helpful thing. It wasn't helpful. Can I speak to that? Say eighteen two, and then not say the roof is X. So uh, I think it's a good question, and it's a natural question to want to know. You know, I I, I certainly um, I think certain people level of knowledge of, of maybe building costs, building materials, how construction works, might want to intuitively ask that maybe more than others that maybe don't understand it. So I, I think for some people wanting to have a baseline understanding a second layer could be helpful. But uh, the challenge in that, in, in you know, providing the public this information is um, we decided that um, we had to draw a line somewhere. And the reason why we drew the line where we did was um, it's, it's difficult to understand um, the nature of pricing when it comes to uh, uh, some of these things, for example, milling, you know, um, the, the, the high school parking lot, the, the cost of that has layers to it within this project. So there's a base cost that um, the estimation came up with. Then there's contingencies on top of that base cost. And those contingencies um, relate to the time of the bidding climate, um, how far out it is from today, you know, and, and there's, so there's lots of factors that play into that, which had to be incorporated also. So that number, you know, which is right at the moment a number, um, there was a lot of moving parts to it. So it's it's hard to look at it in a vacuum as a number on a LIDAR for some people. Actually, I would argue for most people. So people are too, can't understand it, so you were not going to give the information? I'm, is that what you're saying? Not at all. No, so I'm, I'm not. It, it kind of felt like, just you know, the way, the way you communicated, it kind of sounded... Well, I, I at least us as as um, as just a sort of a a, a a feedback thing, but you had sort of said, well, someone who has more knowledge might more, be more inclined to question something or ask about the cost of a certain item. I technically disagree with that. Okay, which is probably why we're coming to our conclusion. We're coming to over here, which is actually that I wish I was as concise and and to the point as that gentleman over there, who was very, really addressing. Most yeah. of what I was wondering is why the heck is all this in one lump? Couldn't we have used some of, uh, you know, we, could, we can or can't use capital reserve towards maintenance, towards repair, cannot. Right, so if there's a cracking thing, you can't use capital reserve, you have to use it for a project to build something. Well, you're not going to get additional state aid in a, in a the formula forces us mm. to play this game. And, right. it's, and it's a 50 so we're not allowed to use that yes. fund we're not allowed to use that fund to just repair a link for example. and one thing on the state aid mm. you're right those tax dollars and a whole state pays state taxes so right i don't really care about the state aid it's all yeah. illusion but but that goes into it so it's it's us taking back some of the money that everyone's paid into otherwise every other district's taking that money and they're, and we're taking our dollars and giving it we're fixing other districts so it right. gives us the opportunity to get a cut a check to, to lower what it's going to cost us otherwise we're paying for every other district to upgrade the facilities without upgrading ours. Well, right, and I think they should probably tighten their belts as well. So, so that's, but that's, that's, what the, that's what the because state is. Because at this is. point, the, the tax burden, I mean, I understand your point, and I don't disagree with it completely, but the tax burden is so high on local residents, and I've had customers of mine who literally had to move because they were priced out of their own home. They're paying over $1,000 a month to live in their own home between their taxes for the property, which had escalated over 30 years, and the school taxes. And, you know, if you're widowed and you don't, you know, have a huge income, that's a big, big burden. And I just don't understand. Again, I think that was a completely reasonable suggestion. I would have, that's what I wanted to see was what is this stuff costing? And then I would have really, really liked to see. These are the things that we need to address for very serious reasons. These are the things we think would be nice. And that way we can say, you know, maybe we can afford the things that look nice, but then maybe people can say, maybe in next year, maybe the year after we'll think about it, you know, depending on how things go, depending on how the economy is, fuel costs and everything else. Um, some of the reasons why I think that we don't break out the cost is because we, you know, we put all oh, the roofs going to cost X and the people who bid it are going to try to bid around that X and giving them a predetermined number. 
rather than them come in and you know do the work and give us an honest and, and flat out bid. If we give them that that rough number, that's what all the contractors are going to shoot for, even though they can come in way under that number. But, 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 but still, this all chases back to the school district through the administration to the board is asking the taxpayer to pay 18 2 for this project. So you all came up with this number somehow. When you include something like paint exterior metal doors, that can be a negative distractor for someone that's looking to complain about, oh, geez, and they can't even paint their own doors. Where, you know, what's right? Say this. I'm with you in your fight. I'm with you. But there are ways where you can not give me enough information where you're respecting me as a voter to be supportive. And again, I, I don't know the answer around, but ready? There's got to be some way where you're giving me an idea if doing this roof is going to be half a million dollars and if the milling of the uh, parking lot is going to be a hundred grand, something where I go, all right, they're not doing something crazy that I think isn't, you know, where, where I can make an educated decision. You're just listing a bunch of things. And then when it says 18-2, I just kind of wonder, like, what is all in that? I, I, think, I think that we're hearing that you really want a little more detail on the costs. And I, I believe that we could probably maybe get something pulled together that could go up on the website that people could take a look at. Too late to get it in the mailer or on, on the board. Would you, um, if we were to kind of find a middle ground, like um, ranges or some sort of- let me, tell you the big, let me tell you the big thing on a range that I would have found helpful to make a yep. community member suggestion to the team. I found a couple of things in here that I thought were safety or educational that you have as alternative scope. And again, you've made your decision, but I think that door getting out there is something that really would have meant something academically. And then I think it's a huge safety issue to go ahead and have your generator for the middle school. And then I start wondering, well, on these other things that I don't quite think are that essential to safety and education, could something there have fallen over to alternative and come in place? And again, that's not my job, that's your job. And you guys are gonna, you guys do a great job. But that's a way where I think I can be a helpful voice and I'm willing to say I'm outvoted, but but something where you can get some feedback on some things. Because again, I, I do have some questions here about, and then I'm just gonna shut up because this meeting's gone too long. You don't need to hear more of me, but we went through cameras before. And with all the damn school shootings, I worry about exterior safety of the campus. And when I read your list, I don't see anything there. And I would have liked to have had a little bit of a discussion about, hey, did you look into this at all? And would it have been cost prohibitive or was it not really that important? Or because what I am tired of hearing, I talk when you talk about Panther Cry, is it can't happen here. Any well, I know of board members say that. I do. And, the, and, and again, that's one where they, Focusing on safety and academic program, no arguments. But I'm going to tell you, I'm so tired of the part of the asphalt on, on your grounds. We've expanded, expanded, expanded parking. And then it seems like every four or five years, we're milling something up and putting it down as opposed to annual treatment or every other year treatment. To, to where we're not doing that. And you know what, maybe, it is, maybe it's even cost effective, but again, I'll listen to that argument, okay? But when it just shows up, 
it just seems lazy to me and it seems like same old, same old. Thank you very much. We have one more gentleman here. I don't know. I don't want to leave you out if you have any questions for tonight. Uh, can you uh, describe how, how the uh, your state aid gets into the picture because you're 18, you're what, 18 too, but state aid doesn't go against that. It goes against essentially after you borrow the money or use your. So, so actually, you get the state aid on the 18 too. Can you use the microphone for the yeah. back row here? You, yeah, you actually get the um, state aid on the 18 too. You get it on the full, full 18 too. And then they assume an uh, interest rate, a statewide interest rate. So we get. That's why that project, you can see the 18.2, we're borrowing 9.7. You know, that's why there's that's why there's a smaller, you know, there's only $157,000 impact. So you do actually get the aid on the $18.2 million, even though we're borrowing less. Okay, just to add to the course here, maybe you could show that. And you're, you're saying it's 18.2 and then the capital reserve, Pays for about half, and net net borrowing pays for half, and then then the state aid shows up mysteriously at the end of the. Yeah, I see. So, discussion. so yeah, I, I, yeah. So you have the the. So instead of a scary eighteen two, how about showing us a nineteen uh, a nine something or other make us feel better? <laughs> well, that's where that's that's where the actual average local costs one hundred fifty seven thousand dollars a year. That's what it costs. That's what you're paying. That's why the taxes. Or seven dollars and seventy nine cents for a hundred thousand dollar house. I got, I'm getting that now. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. it. Okay. Much. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Eighteen point two. Half of it from the state that leaves nine. We have a capital reserve eight. That here's the here's that's the, why it's that small piece. And so I think if we could have been we could have been clear about how we how we destroyed that. Um. Yeah. Uh, I have a question to the point of safety, and I have mixed feelings on the the safety part of things, but. One thing that we had noticed is there seems to be an interesting combination of stuff. We have the elementary school that can open windows because somebody's going to come in, but then we have an outdoor pavilion for outdoor classes. And I, I tell you why I'm, I've probably a very different opinion than that gentleman over there regarding school safety is that someone who's dedicated to their goal. I'm trying to think of something you could do that would actually stop them in that way, keep them from getting in. Very difficult. Um, there are just too many, too many ways of doing it. So let's say you have the thing completely locked down. And you've got to check, you know, on all these processes and stuff. You know, a, a night like this, somebody can walk in, they can hide out and just wait overnight with some sandwiches. I mean, if they really, really want to, if they want to think of all the different angles. And if you look at some of the incidents that happen in, in other schools, the things that didn't work, but they tried, were much, much more deadly than the things that they actually <laughs> managed to get work. But it was very low-tech stuff that they tried that would have done a lot more damage. And people, I think, don't think about that, is that someone who's, again, who has a settled purpose, it's it's very difficult. So, But the, the, the thing about not opening the windows, I, I guess it's tough for me to think about how secure those windows could really be. Are they bulletproof? Are they, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really make much sense to me. And maybe I'm all washed up. So. You're right. Um, and when it comes to security, there's no limit to the permutations about if someone's creative enough, how we, um, how we could infiltrate a, a school, right? And we, we always run the gamut between, um, we probably have some examples of how we can keep our students safe in a prison environment, right? Big big fences, big walls, high-tech security, but we've got to try to find, what we try to do is find some middle ground. And you're absolutely right. We have students who go out for physical education or go out uh, to do field trips. There's always a vulnerability. And uh, maybe we have a, maybe it's a perception of security that, that exists more than a reality. I, I do want to, uh, I do want to take an exception. If, there's, if you have an example, that's fine. But I know on the in the board meetings that we have, and you have somebody sitting right next to you that um, says this all the time. Um, we cannot, and as a superintendent, I'm going on record. It can happen anywhere. Period. We we never ever take the approach that just because Chatham is a really nice place to be, that it can't happen here. And and I'll, I'm going to end my comments on safety, kind of following up on what you said. And it's it's 
those are all tools that help us. But one of the major tools that we're focusing on this next couple to continue to focus on, and I think we have to provide um, greater emphasis on, is getting closer to our students, making connections, understanding where many times we see these threats come right from internally, and we didn't even know it. And so you, we can talk about more sophisticated techno technological solutions, but we've got to also balance that with better um, student supports and um, my yeah. husband wasn't talking about implementing more security. He was oh, calling no. out the fact that we're very concerned about the air conditioning because we can't open a window, but now we're going to put more students outside. It just and, seems, that, yeah. and how that sounds completely at odds with each other. But I have an actual question. Before you said, somebody said something about our contemporaries and that the school, deserve, or the students here have the, you know, the, uh, should expect the same thing their contemporaries have. What schools do you think are Chatham's contemporaries and what facilities do you think they have? Because what I see here, I don't see any schools in this county or in Clear County or Green County. I, all of our schools are pretty much in the same condition. So I, I think that's sort of, and again, to speak to this gentleman's point over here, when you're looking at line items, the thing is you want to compare. Okay, what is the roof going to cost as opposed to putting some foo-foo furniture out in a courtyard? And let's weigh these things because it makes sense. You know what's going to happen to that foo-foo, all those little cute little colored cushions? Looks beautiful, right? You know what they're going to look like in 10 years? It ain't going to be cute anymore. And they're going to have to pay more money and more money and more money to maintain all these kinds of things. So tell me which schools aside from maybe not having a leaking roof, because we all agree we need to fix the roof, we need to fix the lintels, we need to do something on the parking lot. We all agree on stuff like that. We're going to get the disagreement is these other things and there's no values assigned to them. So you can, what is the proportion here that's necessary and that is wish list? And if you can't sort those things out, it makes you suspicious, it makes you go, mm, I don't know here. And you can do a capital project with just complete necessaries as well, without lumping all this other kind of stuff together. You can do one every year for just need what needs to be done that year and still get your state aid. And get, so anyway, who do you think that our contemporaries, that we're just so falling behind in our tech labs and our fancy music whatever rooms, and who are they? I could give you a, a so first of all, you have to understand that our students and our, our students mainly are the ones that go to other schools for athletic competitions and for other purposes and come back to us and look and say, the community, we, we want, we, we included those things so that we could represent that we care enough about some of the other non-tangible items about having pride within your school. I understand and, and, that, but it, like they're not going to who's at falls and coming back. No, like, you know, I, 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 they're not perhaps, going to do perhaps, saying, "Oh my God, love Perhaps it. if you visited Ichabod Crane, Skodak, or some of the other yeah. schools that have had recent Recently. building projects. Um, have you been to the high school? Have you been over not to the high school? I've only been to the elementary school right. in Ichabod Crane. I wasn't that impressed. Again, I'm not. It's it's not. All I'm saying is our students come back to us and say this building is 50 years old. It's tired. Um, it's it's a it's. It's not distilling this um, uh, sense of modern state-of-the-art programs. And so we, as a committee, we tried to respond to that. And I'm going to leave it at that because this is a community decision. And uh, did you, I don't know if you had anything else. Well, if I, it could, so just one thing on that, because I think as I remember yeah. capital projects before this one, we were very heavy on the middle school because that had significant problems. And then we were pretty heavy in the elementary school. And now it seems to be the high school's turn. So each capital project, about every four or five years apart, one building, it's kind of like their turn to do some bigger things than the others. And now it just turns on it's time for the high school to get a little bit more. The wonderful thing about this school I was a freshman coming into this building, right? Um, is that it was 129 students in my graduating class, freshman class. It's a smaller student population today. So the blessing for us as taxpayers is we haven't had to do build on, build on, build on. 
And back then, it was hard to get the capital project approved to even build the school. And it's held up pretty well. And things like those moving petitions was a, oh, this is the way things are going. And we have found that over 50 years, no, we never really use them that way. So it only makes sense to now say, let's give them sound isolation, all that. But things like Mr. Giddo's wonderful band room does need a nice upgrade. The, the roof, thank God it held on as long as it did. It needs to be fixed. So it, it, it makes sense to me that the high school is getting the facelift now that it didn't get in the last two projects. I guess I'm just asking to what degree though? I mean, who are we trying to compete uh, with? Uh, I guess it's think about Crane. No, I, mean, I, I don't want to be- Because we're not going to be shit. So, so can I, I, to I, I, I don't think the, uh, certainly not the intent of the committee, the facilities committee, you know, was to ask the question, who are we competing with? Um, Catching up to? Who are, that, that question never came into the committee. We didn't discuss it. So it wasn't a question that, that was considered. offered as a reason. So that's why I, I asked. We can't remember who, but some students, students have come back to us. I actually had parents and grandparents come back to me and say, you know, it's really embarrassing when the homes, when the visiting teams come into our school because we they're, they're at what the sites just are not up to date. And I've had several in the last year or two. They're not impressed but, by our frugality? Well, you tell them how much they're saving on state aid? I'm just teasing. <laughs> oh, come on. I thought it was pretty good. You know, anyway. but, but, but the thing uh, is, those are the things, you know, when you ask why. I, mean, I went to this school my whole career, and I went to other schools, and they were some very nice schools. I, I only slightly disagree with my wife here. There were schools that had pools. I was actually aghast at the fact that they had spent right. money on a pool, but that's not the point. I went to who's at calls, wait. okay? Did it ding, 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 ding. I get it, you know, but I just don't remember. I just. I just I mean, don't see it. We had students with paint panthers, things. big panthers, and they were in the hall. We had a John Wayne and a Marilyn Monroe thing. It was, I don't know, it's probably gone now. But we had some very creative people, and they would do things that were interesting and cool. And also, you'd come back to the school. Coming back to the school, I got a little bit, I, look, I didn't enjoy it all that much. I was a technically a great student, but it wasn't something that I was like relishing. Okay. But at the same time, I do get a feeling of nostalgia when I come back. And if I see something that, you know, somebody had created and it's still there. What that I'm trying to bring to mind time. is for the, the only, the school that I remember, which is a little bit before my time, but being modernized is to Connick Hills. And if you talk to anybody that goes to Hills, it's been falling down within 10 years after they made it. You know, fixtures coming off the walls, you know, linoleum, the walls, the wall, you know, because they don't make things like they used to. Like this painted, it might look ugly, but it's not going anywhere. You know, when it's some of these more modern stuff, and that's the thing, I, you know, I alluded to before, you put more modern stuff in there, what's gonna happen is gonna deteriorate faster. We're not gonna be looking at it 50 years saying, oh gee, maybe you should repaint it. If within 10 years, it'd be like, oh, we gotta get rid of this crap. So there's, a, I think there's costs involved beyond just putting it up, because then you gotta maintain it. And it ain't that 50, 60, 70s, tough as nails, industrial stuff, that we used to put in. Ask anybody from Takana Kills. You know, they put the state of the art, whatever, and it it doesn't hold up. And I, I think you're making a very good point. And, and you know, we are absolutely going to charge our architects to make sure that, you know, okay. the, the specifications we put together are appropriate. And, you know, that's why we have design professionals. We rely on them and we believe in them. So we, but it's an excellent point and one we should consider 100%. So we'll have 50 year bleachers going in? 100 year bleachers. <laughs> uh, All right. Even better. Even better. Cement bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be really honest, the thing that I was addressing was more science labs. Yes, there are more updated science equipment out there that we could be putting into our labs that would be there. I'm, we're not saying that, they, that the science shouldn't be in there with the science labs. Yes, it should. But the material we are using some of which is 40 or 50 years old, is ready to be replaced and updated. And to go back, what percentage of this is what you're talking about as opposed to fluff, exteriors, 
that's an easy that's an easy presentation to put together actually and i think for for us that's great to hear that was what we heard out of this meeting was you really do need to see to be able to see some some numbers on, but, but on I some think, of these things. i think it's going to be quite general I don't think we're looking for roof nail costs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this isn't we're not holding you to it. We're just saying, yeah. you know, whatever those right. items yeah. are. So, I, and then you have one more question. I don't want to, and then, you know, what we can do is if someone has to leave. All right, the back row has some more financial questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if the, if the total cost is really about $9 million of our money from whichever pocket and take it out of, how come you're not using capital reserve for all of it? What are you borrowing money for at all? Because we only have 8.4 8 million total approved capital reserves. We max them out. Well, all the work is 18.2 well, in Prop 1. I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at Prop 1. So, right. I, yeah. no, so I'm not, not the whole thing. Yeah, so there's no... So it's 18.2 minus... So, but but 18.2 eight, isn't really the cost. It's 9 million bucks. Ish. Well, the reserves that are being used is the 8,400. That's all the reserves we have. So then we, we need to borrow 90, no, but you're saying that, Yeah, but the state's covered half of it. So I, I, I'm, I, missing, I'm, I'm missing yeah. a... Can I, can I summarize what you're asking? So if, see if I understand it correctly. Yeah. So you're saying roughly the project's 18, the state gives us back half, so we're at nine. Why, are, why can't we just... Cash it up. What, why do we have to go out? Why can't we just use our reserves for that nine? That's yeah. your question. Yeah, okay. We're using, okay. so we have 18.2. We're using all the reserves we have available. Well, okay, but the, That's cost, all of the cost is an 18.2. You're telling me the state's going to pay half. So yeah, it, it, it's about $9 million you need. Think about a difference. 18.2. We take we take the um, capital reserves off. The balance that we need to pay is nine point seven. That's what we have to borrow. The state pays our financing on it, but we borrow the, the nine. The state's million not dollars. paying the whole nine million dollars. Oh, okay, they're just no, paying for the. Interest. I'm missing that part. Okay, that's well. So what, just, the, here, here, here's the here's the numbers, right? So we have eighteen point two. We're going to borrow nine point seven because. First of all, we're going to use our reserves. So they're going to pay the aid. They don't give you it up front. It's paid over 15 years. Okay, they don't give you yeah, a check. Yeah, that's different. From okay. That. Yeah, Pretty that's why different. That's why these numbers, that's why you can't. So when you borrow 18, you borrow 9.7, well, there's interest on that. So the total debt service, if you sum it all up for all the years, that's why I do an average for the one year, is $12.7 million because you're paying interest on that. The state aid equals 10.376. So that's the 18.2. You get roughly half of it back. And they amortize at a lower interest rate. Okay. So that's the difference. So then if you net out the project 2.3 million over 15 years, I divided that out to get the one. Okay. So the, the state doesn't cash this so off. Yeah, they don't they don't pay off. Okay. It's over 15. That might might be helpful. Okay. Sort of in there. Is anybody interested? Uh, and again, I, I'll stay all night, but is anybody interested after this to see anything? Or are you pretty much familiar with uh I, I wouldn't mind seeing some of the rooms you want. Yeah, to and then we can maybe ask, you can ask some questions as we're going through. Oh, I have one other technical yes. question. Uh, what was the kilowatt rating needed for the whole building generator? Our electrical expert here can tell you all that. Um, it's probably, probably around 500 amps, three phase, 277. Okay. Um, and then it's it's the generator that we brought in. Right, right, but you don't know what the kilowatt output of um, that is. I think it's like 360,000 okay. kilowatts. Fair enough, thanks. Okay. Um, I'm going to invite everyone to do a quick walk around. Um, those of you who, have, who can join us, please.